We've had this little wallaby going around the garden for a while now. We quite possibly aren't getting much of a sense of scale. But it's quite a lot smaller than I'd normally expect to see a solo wallaby. I have to assume that, sadly, this little creature's mum died and it's been set out into the world on its own a bit earlier than it might have wanted to have. But I'm glad that it's found somewhere safe. It's safe here, at least from us. Can't vouch for the other animals. And it seems to be doing all right. This afternoon I intend to plant out the Chinese pistachio, or at least begin the process. Um, so I thought with this tree I might actually bring it within the fence line. Um, I had originally planted the Chinese pistachio over there. I had wanted a sort of corridor of autumn interest trees that blended into the Japanese Acer garden, which is in front of the library. So I had a Chinese pistachio and a flowering dogwood, and they both drowned, because as green as this looks, you don't have to dig down very far and you basically hit solid clay. And I think a, a more mature plant, or a plant that wasn't contending with such a wet summer, would have been okay with that because it would have been able to push through. But they were both quite little plants. I usually can't afford to buy very big trees. And it just rained and rained and rained. So the soil within the fence line has been improved over the years by me and by previous owners. So it's much more free draining which is what this tree likes it likes a free draining soil or a freer draining soil and i like having deciduous trees helps to sort of lower the ambient temperature of this part of the garden and therefore of the whole garden um, because we have quite a few dotted about so I've done some research and I know that um, this tree is regarded as quite a small tree one mature, ideal for smaller gardens. It'll grow to about six metres, which sounds quite tall to me, but some trees I've looked at grow to 50, so I suppose in that context that is quite short. And I know that width-wise it'll grow to about the same. So what I want to do is I've got my tape measure and I want to see what three meters looks like either side of the tr of the stem so I can get an idea of where to place it along this fence line so it's not going to get in the way of access or overcrowd the existing plants I've got here. I was just looking across at this peach tree and I reckon that's about six meters tall. Uh, that's this tree here. So I have to give it some context as to how it might look. So I'm pretty confident the garden's got more than enough space up here to accommodate a tree. Um, I have plans for this part of the garden. Um, nevertheless, if I step back, you can see just how this area at the moment is just a giant expanse of lawn. So I've definitely got room for a small, what's regarded as a small tree. And having the peach tree behind me for context is very helpful. So I place it where I sort of thought it would be good to go and I've measured it out. And that's uh, three metres to there. 
so I think I've put it in pretty much the right space. I've brought it forward from the fence a little bit more, um, though I don't really mind if it sort of goes, goes over and towards the fence. I'm not that bothered about being able to get behind the tree as such. So I think that's looking like quite a good spot. So I now shall start the process of actually planting it. Okay, there we go. But I just quickly explain what I have done. So obviously I dug a great big hole, twice the size of um, the root ball, in fact quite a lot bigger than that. I then placed the plant in after I'd roughed up the roots, freed them a little, into the hole and I backfilled it with the soil that came out of it and also a mixture I like to use of uh, compost, well rotted manure and since it says this tree likes free draining soil I also added in some rough loose gravel. Then I watered it, great big soaking and I also added some seaweed solution to the watering can because that helps the roots establish. You might be able to see um, the soil that um, was in the hole. It's lovely and brown and friable. But um, as with the rest of the garden, that's only really the top part of the soil. And after that, you hit the clay. So I hope that I, I, I've roughed it up, I've dug it up, I've added um, lots of compost and it'll take a while before the tree hits that layer and it's also got space to move laterally as well as down. Uh, as you might be able to see as well, um, the tree's slightly sunken so it's, I like to do this with trees, um, it acts as a natural sort of sink. <laughs> So the water will stay in this shallow little hole and then I've um, lined the hole with manure. Um, I gather that you're not really supposed to over improve the soil when it comes to trees but um, that advice primarily applied to planting trees in Britain and I feel like here I have to do things slightly differently because the conditions are a little bit more on the extreme side. I've also staked the tree and I know there's some controversy about whether you should or shouldn't stake a tree and how you should stake a tree but um, I just shove a stick in the ground. This is an old curtain pole and then I attach the tree right quite loosely with an old stocking. Uh, not a silk one, those are for best. <laughs> And then I've made this tree guard uh, out of some metal. I don't know what this is used for originally. It looks like the sort of thing you put into concrete slabs. Um, but anyway, there's some of that lying around on the property and I like to reuse things where I can. So it's quite a wide tree guard, but it's not particularly tall when you compare it to the tree. So I'm hoping that I won't get like a kangaroo leaning on the fence and putting its head over to have a nibble. Although to be fair, mostly I only see kangaroos eating grass, so it would be more likely to be a wallaby that would do that. And um, what I did with the earth that I dug out, because I don't like things to go to waste, if I spin round, you might be able to see in this part of the garden, the ground's quite uneven. So every time I've dug a hole recently, for whatever reason, I've been transporting the soil and the grass and I've been filling in this dip area. So it looks like a homogenous piece of lawn from afar, but it isn't. It's comprised of all sorts of bits and pieces that have sort of come together over summer. So I've put what I've just dug out in this section. My intention is to get my rotavator out and go over all of this area, try to level it, backfill it with soil that I will buy to level it more, and then I've got some grass seed which I will put down. So for a little while this won't look so good, but I hope that um, the outcome will be it will be a lot more even. It's very uneven at the moment. 
and uh, more pleasant to, to walk on, you don't have to worry about breaking your ankles. So anyway, Chinese pistachio, good luck. Rodent season is well and truly upon us. about to put it back. I couldn't resist showing you this. Hope you can see. I've got a mother and a baby kangaroo. I'm sorry it's so shaky I've just zoomed in. If I get too close I'll get spooked and hop off. But it's a really lovely afternoon. It's about 4.30 and it's 25 degrees and it's a clear blue sky and they're just chilling near the orchard. That's the orchard fence there, in the shade, taking it easy. This mother and um, baby have been hanging around the house, well, the garden, for quite a while. It's lovely to watch them, mind you. And I've just been mowing the lawns. And seeing them look so lovely gives me a certain sense of pleasure. Still not quite reached the last yet though, for this job anyway. I don't know how well you'll be able to see. I don't know if it's just the light. This kangaroo's got this haze of insects all around it. It's clearly not enjoying it. it doesn't seem to be affecting any of the other kangaroos. But as I say, it might just be that they're particularly being captured by this light. I'll try and get a bit closer, but highly likely to hop away. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. It's sort of like a floating, jiggling around halo. Never seen anything like it. There are quite a few on the lawn at that time of day. This seems to be the only one with a phalanx of flies following it about. Will and I are taking the opportunity, whilst it's one of his days off, to get a few tasks done around the property, and one of which is uh, fixing this pipe. I was uh, mowing the lawn, surprise, surprise, and I accidentally nicked the pipe. I don't know if you can see that. And all this water came spurting out of it. Obviously, it's just the water that was in the pipe further up. Um, but obviously, we can't use it like this. So luckily, we had this spare component lying around which connects to lengths of this pipe together. Um, so what we're going to do is just saw it through and uh, connect it up and it'll be as good as new. I was very annoyed that I did that. Uh, it's the first time I've done that and it's been like this for quite a long time. But as I've mentioned previously, ultimately we really, 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 really want to bury this pipe but it's a bit more complicated than just digging a trench because there's a whole network. Stepping back, um, stemming back to the library that needs to be upgraded before we can do that and we're not in a position to do that at the moment. But hopefully we'll fix this relatively simply and pump some water because it's due to rain later today. So we'll be able to collect the precious water to go in our tank which is there. Even Vita's come to help. I 
might be able to hear the petrol pump going in the background but I've come up to the tank. Once the tank's full, uh, I imagine water would come out of this white pipe. Let me get closer. <laughs> I imagine water would come out of this spout but it doesn't. It comes out of here and dribbles down the tank. There's a device called a Yaktek Levitator which I am desperately, desperately keen to get my hands on. Um, essentially it's a, it's a float which sits in the tank and then external to the tank the floats attached to like a red flag which means that um, you can see how much water is in the tank externally at the moment the only way I can tell for certain how much water is in the tank is getting a ladder going up there opening the hatch and looking in or if I see water coming out of there when I'm pumping, then I know that it's full. Oh. Can you see that? I have one full tank, which is very pleasing. To go and turn off the pump now. mend is there and I'm pleased to say that it worked beautifully. This bad bird's been coming to the house for food. <laughs> I think it's bought me some leaves as a present. I'm off to go and prep some more kindling. I'm going to grab one of these batteries. I'm going to go and get my reciprocating saw. to the wood. Here we are. I've always had to keep my kindling under cover for the whole summer and now we're into autumn. That doesn't look like it's set to change anytime soon. you can see. My second kindling pile is looking pretty diminished. So it's time to, time to start topping it up. There we go. Not quite as much as I would like to see on the pile, but it's certainly a start. I would relish that to be about two or three times the height, but I've still got that to process. The battery ran out, so I usually do it for a battery's worth. I'll just keep going, build it back up. Feel a bit like the ants getting their prep done ready for winter. I like this time of year and these types of jobs. I think there's something sort of optimistic about doing all this winter preparation. <laughs> Looking forward to the cooler weather and 
the nice hot fires and hot baths again and all this wood prep is all part and parcel of that gearing up for the next season to come. <laughs>